Hello everyone, I am Sivaram from AIT. I did my master thesis under Professor Penang sir. This is my title, Seismic Response of Asymmetric Rectangular Blocks in High-Rise Buildings. In tall building, designers majorly focus on structural part. However, the non-structural components damaged at lower intensity than the structural part, as we can see from this video. In non-structural components, there are two primary modes of responses are there. One is sliding, other one is rocking. The sliding causes only the little damage. However, the rocking can cause fatal accidents. We considered experimental study using shake table and the analytical study using MATLAB software. Moreover, effect by these three also considered asymmetric bookshelves, content inside the bookshelves and flow accelerations. This is the shake table at AIT. As we can see from this video, when we are applying the ground motions, the bookshelf is rocking and after then it overturned. In experimental study, we considered five different cases. This one is symmetrical block and this one is asymmetrical block. These three are different arrangement of the books inside the bookshelf. When we consider the analytical study, so these are the equations for the rocking motion for the asymmetrical block. These equations are adapted and modified from the past studies. So these are the nonlinear differential equations. So to find the solutions, we use MATLAB simulation. In our study, we choose eight selected ground motions for moderate to high seismic zone. Here the red one is the target response vector. These are the selected ground motions. In high rise building, the behavior of the block at the top story is different from the bottom story. So when we compare the response vector, the flow accelerations are drastically higher than the ground acceleration. And to find the flow accelerations, so we choose four case study building, 40, 33, and 23, and 12 story. We use ETAP software to find the flow accelerations. This is one of the comparison results between experimental and the analytical results. We use two accelerometer. One is at the top of the bookshelf, other one is at the sheet table. From here, we can clearly see that our analytical model predict well the experimental behavior. And here, this is the final comparison results between analytical and the experimental results for the peak ground acceleration at overturning. As we can see from here, our analytical model can be used the prediction for the experimental results. In practically, it is not effective to simulate analytical model for the each block. So that's what fragility graphs are developed. Fragility graph is the probability graph. As we can see, this one is dependent on the seismic parameter and the block parameters. So this one is the probability of overturning. If we develop the graph like this, so we can easily find the percentage of the probability of overturning. When developing fragility graph, we consider 48 different blocks and 8 ground motions and these are the flow accelerations. Totally nearly 3500 cases considered and we consider the scale up effect as well. And finally, nearly 500,000 simulations are simulated to find the results. This one is one of the final outcomes from 500,000 simulations. This is our developed fragility graph. The red one for the ground acceleration and the blue one for the flow acceleration. As we can see, the probability of overturning for the flow acceleration is higher than the ground acceleration. So the building blocks are more vulnerable to the flow accelerations rather than the ground acceleration. If you want more information, you can find my final defense link. Thank you everyone.